FYI to those in council chambers, we're now live on Facebook. Hi, Jennifer, glad you're back in the building. Thank you, me too. Okay, I'm showing 12 on the dot, horizon time, so we'll get started. Uh, thanks everyone for coming to today's work session regarding community recreation and events. Um, I see most members of council are on either Zoom or, and we have three distinguished members present. Um, as always, questions will not be taken from the public during work sessions. And Teresa, I've asked uh, all our presenters thus far um, how they'd like to do things. Do you want or uh, do you want to take questions as you go, or would you like to uh, complete your presentation and then take questions at that time? We would like to take them at the end. Perfect. Uh, thank you for that. And um, with that, we will get started. Well, thank you for the opportunity to present our top priority six penny project renovation of the Civic Center. Jason Sanchez, CRE Deputy Director, is on with us as well. As you recall, we presented projects including the complete renovation of the Civic Center back in November. With concerns expressed about the full cost of renovation, we went back to Semple Brown Architects and Cost Plus Estimators to cost out an alternative. Today, we are presenting, as requested, a phased approach to this renovation. Quality of life amenities comprise what I call the third leg of the stool, right along with public safety and infrastructure. You must have all three for community stability, economics, and vitality. Although CRE is responsible for maintaining close to $200 million in city assets, the sixth penny 
is the predominant funding source for major renovations and new construction. Quality of life projects are um, all assets that make businesses and people of all ages want to live, work, play, and visit Cheyenne. During the pandemic, the civic part of the Civic Center was very evident. It became a place for a pop-up vaccine clinic and inauguration, city council and other public meetings, trainings, and military events. The venue allowed us to continue serving the community, hosting symphony concerts, film festivals, local school, and dance performances. People seek, love, and thrive on experiences, and this was clearly demonstrated during the pandemic. Without shared experiences, we saw people, families, children alike, become downright irritable. They truly missed this aspect of their lives. The Civic Center belongs in the hands of the community. Art and culture matter, and if not made available, quality of life diminishes. We need a civic center because it creates experiences, builds social cohesion, enhances quality of life, and promotes economic developments. From July 2018 to June 2019 alone, the civic center had an estimated $2.8 million economic impact. This venue regularly generates sales tax revenue for the city of Cheyenne and drives tourism. Did you realize that as of today, approximately 66% of Cheyenne's population is now under age 50? This demographic has an expectation of their community and the quality of life it should sustain. The Civic Center provides those opportunities. Where did we start? In the early 70s, the community advocated for a cultural and performing arts center. The people of Cheyenne recognized the need for a venue of this magnitude and understood the rich potential it could bring to surrounding businesses, quality of life, cultural growth, and keeping our children here. The governing body heard what they had to say and went to great lengths to support that initiative. 10 days from now will be the 40th anniversary of the Cheyenne Civic Center. Since the venue's opening day, there has been little to no updates to this venue. As stated by then Mayor Erickson, it is through the love and work of our citizens that your Civic Center is a reality. He further states that the Civic Center has enhanced our lives and increased our opportunity for cultural growth and further allowed artistic endeavor to thrive. We will continue to grow, sharing and building for Cheyenne's future generations, the pride of our ever-present, ever-changing life arts. So this is where we are now. The deterioration of the Civic Center is a direct reflection of the lack of investment and of the future. What is the buy-in for the next generation and what experiences do we want to bring? Why do we need a change? Did you know that the arts contribute more to the national economy than construction or transportation and warehousing or travel and tourism, mining, utilities, or agricultural industries? According to the Bureau of Economic Analysis, Arts and cultural production accounts for over $1.1 billion and comprises 2.9% of the Wyoming economy. Clearly, the arts are a vital sector that should not be ignored. The arts matter because they help us to understand how we matter, why we matter, how to better relate and communicate as a society, to educate, appreciate diversity, and to open minds not to mention for pure enjoyment. Unfortunately, as of today, Cheyenne offers limited job opportunities in this sector. Between 2018-19, arts and cultural employment opportunities in Wyoming decreased by 6.7%. This was the largest decrease in the nation. 
The U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics estimates that by 2030, just less than nine years from now, 75% of the workforce will be comprised of millennials. As the state capital, we must ask ourselves, how are we preparing to meet the needs of this next generation? A generation that actively seeks out jobs in the emerging and growing creative and technical economy. We need and Cheyenne deserves a venue that not only provides more job opportunities, but attracts young professionals to our city. By providing quality entertainment in a quality venue, we have the potential to adequately prepare for and serve this next generation. What's holding us back? As reviewed in the November presentation, we are coping with substandard technical supports and patron accommodations, like safety issues, deferred maintenance, and some structural issues. Suffice it to say, this facility is 40 years old with little reinvestment in the building or fixtures. Seating, technical equipment, HVAC system, all original. In other words, they are 40 years old. If we can't fix it all at once, we have a phased proposal for your consideration. Phase one is delineated in red. The proposal indicates a new lobby structure that essentially wraps the audience chamber and then also proposes some interior renovation of the chamber itself. What is not included in phase one are the multi-purpose space shown in lime green, performance support and spaces, and stage and loading dock solutions shown in the light blue. As was generally described in the previous slide, I'll detail a little bit more here. Phase one strives to resolve as many public concerns as possible, such as ADA, building code, and life safety issues. It proposes more restrooms, new seating, ADA access, not only to seating, but also to the stage, something we do not have now, new orchestra pit and lift, new sound, lighting, and rigging systems, elevator, HVA systems, and fire suppression system, to name a few. Now that we are aware of these issues, it is incumbent upon us to remedy. CRE engaged Simple Brown Architects and cost plus estimators over a year ago to fully, intentionally, and diligently prepare a detailed design with stakeholder input and cost estimate to be fully prepared for six penny consideration. In response to concerns that the entire project likely wasn't viable, we asked them to produce a phase one option that was logical, constructible, and still meet as many of the community's top building concerns as possible. So here what you've all been waiting for is the number. Cost plus estimated phase one cost at $24,340,000 based on a March 2023 construction start. This means that it includes an escalation factor for that time frame. It is estimated to be a 16 month long construction period. So what if we do nothing? The consequence of non-action will result in an escalating increase in operational costs. The venue will require ongoing repairs, technical equipment rentals, and the potential of mechanical system failures, to name a few. As shown in this photo, there is a subsidence occurring resulting in building cracks. The degree and movement of the cracks is being monitored and measured by the device laid across the crack. As demonstrated in our ADA compliance report that we had prepared, the building is not ADA compliant, resulting in exposure to litigation risk. People with disabilities currently have limited accommodations in the venue, yet we have a responsibility to meet their needs. Without functional equipment to improve lighting, projections, and audio, we have fallen behind in our ability to use modern production technologies. This will result in decreased interest from tours wanting to come to Cheyenne to perform. As a result, public interest will also decrease. 
and the civic center will have less relevance as we know it. We do not want to risk our good and hard earned standing among touring companies, performers, renters, other users, and especially our patrons. Why should we care? Because our community does. We are one of the highest rated venues in the state of Wyoming. On Google alone, we have over 495 reviews. The people of Cheyenne and the region have a voice and they are sharing that with you. The patron you see here states that the Civic Center is one of the things she loves most about living here in Cheyenne. Cheyenne is trying to tell us and you, the governing body, that this venue is worth investing in. Reviews often state how the Civic Center has the potential of being an upscale venue, but the cosmetics, seats, inadequate technical equipment, limited restrooms, and so on are holding us back. As you can see from the reviews, the venue is a great asset to Cheyenne. The people of our community and the region are asking us to take care of it. However, it is not all bad news here. There are many things about the Civic Center that work well. The current location has easy access, ample parking, and facilitates patronage to downtown businesses. Performers and patrons alike rave about the dynamic acoustical quality. This plan does not alter that. However, it does propose to expand the acoustical versatility. The capacity of the Civic Center is appropriate for the size of our community. It is an intimate venue that is truly appreciated by our patrons. As our community and patronage grow, we would have the ability to host multiple showings over multiple days rather than the current one-nighters. If you take Denver, for example, the downtown theaters host shows for days or even months at a time to serve their population. This is an economical approach as opposed to having a large venue that is more expensive to maintain, difficult to sell out on any given night, and loses the intimacy desired in a performance space. Community and regional support for the increased number and variety of programming has resulted in drawing people who have never been in our venue before. I should have drank water a long time ago. <laughs> With the establishment and dedication of the Cheyenne Civic Center Foundation, now a 501c3, we now have access to funding opportunities not available to municipalities. They administer the arts access program and advocate for the Civic Center with public outreach. The public-private partnership concept has worked well for the Botanic Gardens, as we all know, and we hope to replicate that model. New branding, website, marketing analytics, and ticketing have all improved service delivery, exposure, our ability to target markets, and processes for the venue. After 40 years, it was truly time for a facelift in branding and imagery. We have increased the revenue derived from food and beverage sales along with increased sponsorships and grants. Where are we heading? We started building this future in 1979 with community initiative and support. And now we need to move into the future. The lower right photo is the architect's rendering of the exterior renovation concept. For the last three years, our Civic Center team has been experimenting with diverse programming. The newly implemented marketing team has done extensive market research on Cheyenne's evolving demographic, and that data supports our strategy moving forward. This visual is of Whiskey Myers, a show that was scheduled to perform at the Civic Center on May 15th of this year. Unfortunately, due to COVID and issues with routing, they had to cancel. This show was almost sold out with no marketing investment. Over 75% of, of the ticket buyers, many of them from outside of Cheyenne, had never been to the Civic Center. Our Civic Center is a draw and an attraction. The Civic Center team knows our demographic 
and what our community wants to see. With a newly renovated venue, we will be well equipped to present big names and high quality productions that are relevant in today's entertainment industry. There is a return on investment with this project in economic development, revenue, and cultural impact. One thing to note and reiterate to accommodate these types of acts at the Civic Center currently requires the venue to rent technical equipment, thereby adding to production costs. If Cheyenne is to remain competitive, we must evolve and invest in our venue, just as each of these venues have done within the recent past. We must create the same caliber of experience, which is critical to the overall vitality of Cheyenne and to improve our socioeconomics. If we neglect this obligation, we are collectively, excuse me, actively accepting that our economy is a lesser priority and our dollars will go elsewhere. As we wrap up this section, I will leave you with this. In 1981, a promise was made to our community that we will continue to grow, sharing and building for Cheyenne's future generation, the pride of our ever-present, ever-changing life arts. We have the responsibility to deliver on that promise to the people of Cheyenne. Make no mistake, this is our top priority for Six Penny. It is not going to get less expensive. It is a driver not only of community entertainment, but economic development, a catalyst for downtown vitality. This is a revenue generator. The Civic Center is poised to be a part of the recovery from the pandemic economically and socially to move us into Cheyenne's bright future. This is our legacy. The venue is and always will belong to the people of Cheyenne. We believe this to be the only venue of its kind in the state. It should be a place that all patrons feel welcomed, comfortable, safe, and proud to be in. We are so much more than just a concert hall or a performing arts center. We have the potential to make this space available for weddings, art exhibits, community gatherings, lectures, educational opportunities, and so much more. We are a place where memories are made, stories are told, and the legacy lives on. Before taking questions, I would like to invite um, Executive Director Lindsay Reynolds from the Cheyenne Symphony Orchestra to briefly give her perspective as um, the Civic Center has been their performance home for many years. Great, thank you, Teresa. <clears throat> and uh, we'll turn it over to Lindsay. Good afternoon and thank you so much for allowing me to speak with you today. As Teresa mentioned, I am the Executive Director of the Cheyenne Symphony Orchestra. And CSO has been providing arts, culture, education, and economic impact to the city of Cheyenne and surrounding areas for nearly 70 years. For almost 40 years of that time, we have been privileged to call the Cheyenne Civic Center our home. The designers of this facility did a remarkable job creating something that would serve the community well into the future in both capacity and acoustic quality. I am originally from Ohio, although my husband was born and raised here in Cheyenne, and we've lived here for nearly a decade. I'm a professional oboist by training and have played in concert halls all across the country. I can tell you firsthand that it is remarkable a city the size of Cheyenne would have such a facility. CSO brings musicians from around the region, as well as guest artists, world-class guest artists to Cheyenne. They are united in their admiration for the acoustics of the performing space and the visual impact as you look out from the stage is simply stunning. It is a beautiful concert hall. When you look a little deeper though, you find places where 40 years of use and limited maintenance have taken their toll. This impacts both the audience and the performers, but since this phase of the renovation mostly addresses the experience from the patron's perspective, I will try to limit my remarks today to those issues. A few years ago, CSO conducted a patron survey asking for input on the types of programming our audiences would like to see in the future, and we also left room for comments at the end of the survey. 
60% of the comments we received were facility related, which as a renter, we don't have a lot of control over. We did share those comments with the Civic Center staff and they took those comments into consideration when they designed the renovation plan presented to you today. There were two issues that were almost universally mentioned. The first is that the seats are too small and they are loud. I don't know if you've ever had the experience of attending a symphony performance, but frequently at the end of a particularly engrossing movement, the hall descends into silence or what should be silence as the orchestra prepares to begin the next movement. Instead, you hear a chorus of squeaks and groans from the seats as patrons move and shift during the pause. The second issue is the size and number of restroom facilities. For a venue that seats 1,500 people, two women's restrooms with a total of six toilets is obviously an issue. Another important piece of the renovation plan is to refresh and reorganize the lobby to address traffic pro flow problems. The new placement of the box office, restrooms, quote room and concessions will make a huge impact on the quality of the patrons experience outside of the performance itself. Not to mention that creating a much more attractive facade will help draw people to the facility from the outside. And now I'd like to turn it over to Maestro William and Trilligator. Thank you. Good afternoon. It's a privilege to be with you. Thank you for your time and your service. Um, Lindsay and I are here today representing an organization with nearly 70 years of history as a cornerstone of the Cheyenne community. We speak to you today respectfully and humbly and also proud of our rich heritage. Over nearly 70 years, the Cheyenne Symphony Orchestra has grown tremendously. Today, we have thousands of supporters among Cheyenne residents and Cheyenne businesses. Our educational impact and our educational programs reaches thousands of students every year. So Lindsay and I are not just representing the orchestra, its board of directors, musicians, and staff. We are literally speaking on behalf of the thousands of Cheyenne people who cherish the performances that we have at the Civic Center. As a regular tenant of the Cheyenne Civic Center for 40 years, we are a major stakeholder in this proposed project. Everything Teresa has represented really rings true to all of our experiences with the Civic Center. It's a jewel. It has remarkable acoustics. Guest artists who perform all over the world come into the Civic Center for the first time and marvel at the beauty and acoustics of the hall. Yet it's a treasure that needs upkeep and maintenance like anything that we value so that it can be appreciated, experienced and treasured for generations to come. The CSO has firsthand experience with some of the problem areas of the Civic Center and these proposed changes would have a major impact on the orchestra and its patrons. As one example, the orchestra pit cover and lift which maybe something you didn't even know existed or thought much about before this discussion is critically important to the Cheyenne Civic Center. The pit covering has a huge footprint at the front of the stage. The current lift is not capable of supporting the weight of a concert grand piano. We use a concert grand piano regularly and in an ideal situation, the piano would be placed at the very front of the orchestra directly on the spot where the pit cover is and where it can't be currently. Fixing this problem that the designers did not foresee 40 years ago would have a huge lasting impact for the Cheyenne Symphony Orchestra. If you come to this Saturday's concert, you'll see that the concert grand piano has been placed as far forward on the stage as possible, but not on the pit covering because of that lift. The orchestra literally has to surround the piano and it creates problems both acoustically and visually for the audience and performers. Those musicians who are directly behind the piano have an obstructed view of me when I conduct the orchestra. Being able to utilize the entire front space of the stage would create much more flexibility for us, as well as other performing groups that utilize the hall. The Civic Center is the only public venue of its kind in the whole state of Wyoming. Think about that. Let's make it the best. Its location in downtown is also critically important to the businesses downtown. After all, it's the heart and soul of our community and it needs to be downtown in the heart of the city. Letting this facility fall into further disrepair would be a travesty and a betrayal of the vision of the designers. There are many other regional options for entertainment along the front range. Let's not let our patrons go there. Let's keep Wyoming money in Wyoming by keeping this important cultural amenity for our community for generations to come. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir.
That concludes our presentation for the Civic Center. So we can take questions now. Okay, uh, before I open it up for questions, just uh, one uh, another moment to thank Jason and all of the Civic Center staff for all the work that they uh, put into uh, preparing and uh, helping City Council meet uh, at Civic Center in person uh, over the last few months. Um, I, I know that uh, I speak for all members of council when we are very appreciative of your efforts uh, in that regard. And with that, um, I'll open it up for questions. Mr. President, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Roybal. For doctor, remember we were calling each other the other night. Um, as you well know, we have a limited amount of money for the, for the six penny app. We have several, several, uh, uh, we've had several presentations on what people would like, need. Um, <clears throat> I guess my question, or my question would be, if we can't do the whole 24 million, so we, if we, let's say we did 5 million, would that help in uh, renovations and getting everything up to ADA? And as he was saying, the, the pit, getting it uh, taken care of, or what's, what's the minimum that would it take to get everything ready or get everything under ADA? I would, we would have to probably go back to the designer and, and get a cost estimate for that. I don't wanna just pull a number out okay. of the air and to I, do I wouldn't that. hold you to that, but. Um, so um, we can certainly come back with that number. Okay, I appreciate uh, to do that. that. But um, again, there's also this logistical issue with when you start doing renovations is that you start tearing things apart or whatever it affects, you know, it's a cascading effect. And yes. so we also have to be cognizant of that. Um, also, anytime you do that, um, there's a disruption to our ability to host performances and disrupting seasons and that kind of thing. So I think it's more prudent to try and do it in larger blocks. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Roybal. Other questions? Uh, President White, this is Dr. Aldridge. Dr. Aldridge. Um, first and foremost, I wanted to echo uh, your comments about the accommodations that we've had from this crew and the Civic Center in um, the time that we were using their facility. Um, I am a huge supporter of the Civic Center, but I too am concerned about um, being able to fund this all at one time. I do agree with um, Director Moore's comment about how much money this not only brings to our community, but keeps in our community. And I do think that there's been a, a heroic effort made the last couple of years to really expand the demographic of the consumer who uses the Civic Center um, with a lot of potential to continue to increase that demographic and the opportunities there. So um, I'm hopeful that we might be able to find a way to um, make this a, an item that's uh, available on the six penny sales tax and let our community uh, voice be heard. But thank you for your presentation today and for the great information. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Aldridge. Other questions? Mr. President, Tom Seagrave. Mr. Seagrave. <clears throat> when I look at a project like this, I, I think of this is our one chance for the next, pick a number, 40, 50 years um, to do a project of this size. So I guess in my mind, I'm trying to rationalize the cost of renovation of a facility that my understanding is we're actually going to lose seats in versus building a new facility that would handle the needs of the community for the next couple of generations. So when, when I try to rationalize this, I'm in my mind, I'm saying, well, this is just phase one. We really need 40 to $50 million to do the whole project. For let's, I'm just pulling a number for 75 million. Could we design a project and build it that would truly suit the needs of the community for the next generation? So what limited background I have in construction, I know it's very expensive to renovate versus building new on a square foot basis. And I just hate to throw 40 or $50 million at a facility that's going to 
handle fewer people than we currently do. So I don't, I don't have an answer for that. I'm, I'm a big supporter of the need for a civic center. I just don't know if it's a renovation or if it's a new build. That's kind of where I'm at. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Seagrave. Um, Chairman White, through you too, Councilman. Um, as we sort of addressed in, he in here, is that what we're looking at is that most of these venues, they don't keep growing bigger and bigger and bigger. What they do is they, they increase their capacity by offering multiple showings, that they would bring this, um, a show here and they would show it for two, three, four nights to accommodate the population as opposed to having a really huge facility that is more expensive to maintain um, and it's more difficult to sell out. Um, and again, what patrons really like about this is you want some sort of intimacy. You're, you have a, a better interaction with the performer when it's not such a huge facility. We're not looking for a Pepsi center here. We're looking for an intimate venue. And so this is what other communities have done is that they just they simply expand the availability um, as opposed to, to building, making it bigger, bigger, bigger. As we all know, that's just more expensive, more staff time, more heating, more cooling, and all of those things. So that's why we have really, I, I think um, this could really take us into the future based on the, that ability. Um, the other thing we have here, as we talked about, was having it in, in our city center, that how important that is to our businesses, um, access, we already have parking garage, we have all of those things here that are serving us well, so we don't have to make that reinvestment. So I would say for those reasons, I, I, I think it's money well, well spent. And again, um, we have a lot of things in our civic center that are, are serving us well, and I don't know that we want to, to lose those. Uh, President White, this is Dr. Aldrich again. Dr. Aldrich. Um, through you to, um, I don't know if Conductor Twilliger or if um, Ms. Reynolds would be able to answer this question, but I, um, I agree with what Teresa just presented in that what we're seeing in, in uh, entities where we're seasoned members is that they are downsizing, so to speak, um, and providing more amenities, providing more um, of a, an experience, if you will. And I'm curious because I know that I've been able to attend the symphony once in person and once virtually this year. And I know that the Lincoln Center in Fort Collins is looking at selling virtual tickets for their upcoming season next fall. And I'm just wondering with the ability to expand our um, annual or our uh, ticket holders who are you know season ticket holders, um, if there has been a, if you've seen an uptick in people who attend the symphony um, because of the um, ability to view it virtually, I know the night we attended, we posted something on Facebook and immediately had 10 to 15 people who were also attending, but were attending from home. So I'm just curious as to how those numbers are tracking right now. And because I think that's going to be quite honestly, something that's going to be uh, increasing in the future, whether COVID is existing or not, just the ability to attend performances without leaving the comfort of people's homes. Yes, thank you very much for your question, Doctor. Um, the live stream option of the Cheyenne Symphony Orchestra has really been a silver lining of the pandemic for us because not only are we able to provide our performances to our local Cheyenne patrons who don't feel comfortable quite yet returning to their seats at the Civic Center, We've actually been able to reach a like nationwide audience. Some Cheyenne residents who have retired and moved away, which still fans of the orchestra, um, family members of musicians performing and so forth. So we have seen quite an increase um, in that respect. And we look forward to maintaining the live stream option even after the pandemic to be able to continue to reach those people. And again, it's, it's another way that the Civic Center with its sort of stunning uh, visual and acoustic um, opportunities kind of is an ambassador for the city of Cheyenne, even on the live stream going nationwide. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions? Mr. President. Mr. Laborn. Mr. Laborn. 
Well, I have a comment before uh, questions, but my comment would be in the presentation here, uh, the, the excellent presentation that we've seen that uh, really is, uh, and I appreciate uh, our guests, but I think that we, when we look at that, we need to consider that this is far more than this renovation is far more than the ability to uh, attract and um, involve uh, people that are younger than myself. This is a beloved institution that has done so much for Cheyenne for so long. And it's not just the symphony, which um, I'm, not, I'm not really a, a symphony man, but I, I can't imagine that what I see on that stage and the feeling that's brought forward by uh, that orchestra isn't, and of course the guests that we bring and the really interesting contemporary efforts that are made, uh, I'm, I'm just thinking of several of them and uh, particularly the uh, Mexican themed uh, orchestra was just, I can't imagine anybody was doing any better in San Francisco. And that's doesn't happen often enough in Cheyenne. It is, uh, and I think we're also uh, having attended functions in there for 40 years. It's always warms my heart when those performers talk about the acoustics and the, and the feeling that that theater generates. And that is uh, not hyperbole. That that comes from their uh, pleasant surprise that they're that they're there in that kind of facility. So I know we're going to have some tough choices here, and I know that next week we're going to be adding up those numbers and trying to come up with a balanced approach. But I'm personally very much in favor of this. And one of the big reasons that I'm very much in favor of the full approach here is how important it is to meet those ADA standards. As the council's representative to the Mayor's Council with Disabilities, um, I'm hoping when I'm on a walker, I can come in and enjoy the theater. And uh, it's not something you think about a lot, but it is also... Uh, probably, uh, hopefully, in my case, an inevitability. And so continuing uh, that kind of really top quality performance and, and ability for the community, both of the youngsters and of the elders, is uh, something that, that we expect, frankly. And it, it really bothers me to hear those complaints because this is one of the things that makes Cheyenne special. And as was pointed out here, all these ancillary elements and as a representative of Ward 1 and West Cheyenne, I point out that this is another piece of our renaissance and our continuation of the march that Don Erickson started all those years ago. And, and what we do here, uh, in my opinion, is always building on what was previously created. Now, we have reached that critical moment. And so I certainly speak in favor of this approach and know that I don't like thinking we're trying to keep up with the front range. I like thinking we're doing the best we can. And when we do the best we can in this particular theater, we're doing it as good as anybody. And that is what it's all about. So um, obviously I'm very much in favor of this. It's gonna be really difficult next week, but um, obviously you can tell where I'm coming. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Laybourne. Um, in the interest of time, um, Teresa, I think you had another uh, presentation today, didn't you? 
Um, we do have others um, projects up. It was really this. We just wanted to make it clear. This is our top priority. We okay. do have others for consideration, but in the essence of time and whatever, um, I think we will not present those today. Um, certainly, if we get to the point where we are called upon by the uh, governing body, um, we can certainly provide additional information. Okay. Mr. President, Dr. Rennie. Dr. Rennie. Um, in view of the fact that we have a committee of the whole meeting next week to start sorting this out, if they do have other interests, it would be nice to know what those are and what the dollar amounts are. So in the next 15 minutes that we have, I don't know if they can address that or want to provide it in a written form, but I think I would like that information. As would I, I, I think that that would be um, certainly appropriate uh, for the members of council to see uh, the list of requests. Um, Teresa, uh, I'll, I'll leave it up to you. Would, right. would you like, would you like to try to address some of the other things that are priority? Sure, we're queuing it up here. Mr. President, Jason Sanchez, Community Rec and Events. Um, just out of respect for time, I'll make this as quick as possible. Uh, the second project on our uh, six penny request would be to update the irrigation system at Lakeview and Bethel cemeteries. Uh, the, the irrigation system um, at the cemeteries is our oldest system in the city, um, a little over 50 years old. Um, the original design isn't meeting uh, our, our needs for today. As you know, we have a little over 40,000 monuments and approximately six to 800 trees um, that the, the current irrigation system just can't adequately provide um, adequate coverage. Uh, the estimated cost for design and installation is $3,090,372. Um, currently, according to BOPU, we use approximately 29 million gallons to irrigate the cemeteries annually. Uh, the glue joints on this system continuously fail, um, and so we have a lot of wasted water. We have to drag garden hoses and put uh, sprinkler heads out in areas where the current irrigation system does not reach, which eats up a lot of manpower and utilizes a lot of, uh, a lot of water. Uh, the wiring has pretty much uh, become non-existent to many of our zones. So we're not able to operate them off of a clock. We have to come back in and manually turn those zones on, let them run for X amount of time, um, and then shut them back down, which is really inefficient. And again, uses more water than what is necessary. Um, we are obligated to provide perpetual maintenance of our current cemeteries, but our perpetual care fund does not, is not sufficient enough to cover this expense. And I'd be happy to take any questions in regard to the irrigation system. Uh, Jason, I have a question. Uh, in your previous presentation, didn't you tell us that uh, the system is so old that replacement is difficult because some of the parts aren't even that you would need um, aren't even won't even um, properly adapt to the system because it's so antiquated? Mr. President, through you, that is correct. We do have to use a series of bushings to make some of the repairs that we have to make uh, because of the type of pipe and the size that was used in the original install. Thank you. Other questions from council? Here, Roybal. Mr. Roybal. What, uh, what do you have in the perpetual care fund? Uh, Mr. Chair, through you, uh, I, would, I would confirm with uh, Treasurer Lockman, but just under 800,000. It's not even close. No, sir. Okay. Other questions? Mr. President, this is Laybourne. Mr. Laybourne. Is the mayor on this call? He is. Mayor Collins, yes, he is on the call. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I was curious and with um, all of our needs in trying to run the calculations, it's uh, definitely a high pressure time here for us on the council. But I was curious, I know that you had uh, talked about uh, visiting with the commissioners about uh, 
possibly increasing their suggested $55 million uh, figure. Have you uh, done that? Yes, sir. Our number is $64 million, Mr. Laborn. Well, thank you. That's very good news. Um, it, that gives us more space. Uh, doesn't give us <laughs> doesn't give us uh, uh, the magic, but I appreciate your efforts. And I certainly appreciate the commissioners as well. Uh, so, in my internal calculations, I I can go a little higher. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Laborn. Questions from Council. Hearing none, Jason, do you have a, a, another item? I do, this is Teresa. <clears throat> um, we have also, we have a great need for gymnasium space as I think as everyone is aware. Um, the city has two small gymnasiums for, and for years we have relied on the school district to run our youth and adult programs um, in their facilities. And as time has gone by, the school district has and rightfully so, um, they have increased their use of their gymnasiums, making them um, less available to us. So without um, control and availability, it has really become difficult for us to meet the increasing um, demands of our community um, just because we, don't, we can't accommodate them in the facilities that we have. So we're really sort of at the mercy of, of the school district. Um, so we just have a couple of slides here showing what some of those that we serve and that use our facilities. And we are proposing to um, put such a facility on a city owned parcel that is just west of the ice and events center. Ice and events would be um, on your right. Um, and then there's, there's space for two um, large rec facilities. Um, this land was donated to the city and is um, deed restricted to be used um, only for recreation purposes. But um, that certainly is one of our, our needs. Um, and that cost is estimated at $2 million. Um, if you'd like, we could just go through quickly some of these others and then maybe take all the questions um, at the end. There are um, not many left. <laughs> our list is long, unfortunately. Um, one of the things we have talked about um, also, I, I know that the council is very aware of is our Johnson pool, our only outdoor pool in the city that is in high demand and is used by many, um, but it is truly on its last legs. It is 70 years old. We are always a little hesitant um, whether or not we'll, we're able to fire it up each season. Um, so we are not at this point um, given the number of needs um, that we were kind of trying to take a page out of the book that we did with um, the Civic Center, excuse me, Botanic Gardens, and just simply request some money to do a conceptual design and a site analysis um, so that we could be well poised um, to present that project at a future time. Just again, that we like to know exactly what we're dealing with and not just be pulling numbers out of the air. But we are, um, we believe um, we could do that for $250,000 and sort of move forward on doing something about um, our outdoor pool situation. Mr. Chair, Jason Sanchez, Community Rec and Events. The last project that we have on our list today is a renovation of Dutcher Baseball Complex. Again, this is another one of the uh, facilities that we manage that is over 40 years old and is in need of uh, dire repairs. Uh, the lights at the facility are, we have two fields that have lights. The, the wood poles are beyond repair now. They're rotten and, and most contractors will not make repairs for us on the lights. Uh, so we would propose um, new lights on all of the fields, adding new backstops uh, that are higher and are help with safety, uh, replacing the snack shack and restrooms, which again, we talk about ADA, they do not meet uh, ADA requirements. And so a new restroom and concession facility, um, synthetic turf, which helps when we have our rain events so that we're able to get games played. Um, it helps with drainage and uh, provides for a true uh, safe surface for the kids to play on. 
the cost for this project is seven million five hundred twenty seven thousand five hundred and seventeen dollars. Uh, we have uh, baseball is just growing in Cheyenne and we have a high demand for for field use and field space. And our thought is before we add more facilities that we renovate what we have and maximize their use. We currently have five fields out there, but only two of them have lights. So if we were to add lights on all five, put in different distance base anchors, we could maximize the use of that facility and, and provide service for many different age groups. Again, we'll stand by for questions. Thanks, Jason. Um, are there questions from council? Mr. Chair, Royble. Mr. Royble. So question, I, or if you wouldn't mind providing me or providing us with that and probably written or an email on all the different ones and then their, their cost. Okay, please. Thank you. Sorry for the quick presentation. Uh, we were just out of respect for time, um, trying to do our, our best and with the few minutes that we had left. So we will provide this in writing. No, thank you. And uh, Jen, our, our admin, Jen McClellan, is keeping kind of a, a tabulation of each presentation that we've uh, seen so far, as well as uh, the amount requested uh, in those respective projects. So other questions? Hearing none, uh, thank you both for the uh, presentation today. Um, we, we really appreciate it. And again, appreciate all of you and, and your uh, staff's efforts. Uh, I know that the work is, is often not appreciated, but uh, just know that we certainly appreciate you. Um, well, thank with you that, well. we will um, adjourn today's work session and we will start back up tomorrow at noon. Thank you and stay warm.